This video is brought to you by me. Yes, I'm sponsoring my own video. So what? Big whoop, wanna fight about it? Big whoop, wanna fight about it? Anyways, now that I got that awesome advertisement out and done and over with, just had to close my bedroom door because privacy while making videos. That's right. Anyways, today's video is for my review of my Sony RX100 Mark V, which I'm currently recording this video on right now. And for some of the later like shots of the camera, it will be done on my iPhone 8 Plus. So you will see a difference in quality when it comes to, you know, some of these cool shots that some of these other YouTubers do that I'm trying to emulate by showing off some of the things about this camera. So now, this camera is incredible. It's amazing. I love it. It's a little expensive. $1,000 is quite expensive for a point and shoot camera. It's actually, I think, one of the, if not the most expensive point and shoot camera that you can get on the market right now. Actually, no, I'll take that back. There is one that's slightly more expensive, but it's definitely mostly for shooting. And this camera, if I can get the lighting right, is for people like me that want to vlog, I think at least, because for one of the features, it has a flip up camera. So you can see exactly where you're looking at or pointing the camera out when you're pointing the camera at yourself. Now vloggers love this feature because like I said, people can see what they're pointing at. And so if I wanted to say, hey, look at that back here, or hey, look at my puppy right there. I can see exactly that my puppy is right here and she is inside of you. Whereas if you didn't have it, I could be like, hey, look at my puppy. And I'm thinking of pointing at her. I mean, it's kind of obvious right now, but this is just a dramatic example of things. I don't think that she's in this shot, but she's actually only partially in the shot. That's why people love these uh, cameras. I have the screens that either flip up, flip down, or flip to the side, however they go. Now, I'm getting a little off topic with this review because I wanted to focus on the negative aspects of the camera first and then go to the positive because there are some pretty interesting negative aspects about this camera that people may not know of that I've kind of discovered over my year and few months usage of this camera. So this is a one year review. Well, a little over a year now, but this is my one year review of the Sony RX100 Mark V. Now we'll get into the negatives and then I'll come back to the positives. One big negative aspect that I don't know if it's because my camera is a lemon or not, I've been searching and searching online to see if anybody else has been having this problem with this camera. Uh, it seems like they, there have been reports of people having this problem with like the previous generation of this camera. But the problem I've been having is the incredibly loud zooming, which can be heard in videos. It's not so much of a big problem when you're taking photos, but when you're doing vlogs like I do, the zooming can be very, very annoying and jarring. Let me give you an example. So, I'm going to zoom in on my adorable puppy right here. Now I'm sure you can hear it as zooming in. And hear it zooming out. When you're actually doing it, you can definitely hear it, but it doesn't sound as loud as it shows up on a video. Which, I'm sure that's pretty loud. Thank you, Leia. You were an awesome object to be filmed. So thank you very much and thank you for waking out everybody. All right, so that's one big negative for me for this camera. And not, like I said, I don't know if it's because my camera is broken in some way or another, or if that's just how every one of these cameras is like. Um, I can't remember if in the very beginning it made that sound or not. I just know that after I went on my trip to San Francisco that I really started to notice the zooming noise. So I don't know what happened between me buying it and my trip to San Francisco. It's just, I don't like it and I can't find anything to fix it. Which brings me to my second negative aspect. And it's not so much the camera, it's more of the customer service of Sony, which is something you have to think about when you're buying products from certain brands. So when I came across this problem, I don't know about you guys, but I normally don't have to deal with this sort of thing. But Sony, while my camera's on a warranty, Sony wanted me to pay my shipping of my camera to them. Now that is something I haven't had to deal with before because with some of my other electronic items that have gone bad, such as my Xbox 360 when it had those red rings of death, Microsoft picked up the tab for shipping and handling. They paid for the box, they shipped the box to me, 
I put the Xbox in a box and I shipped it out. Didn't have to pay for anything. For one of my laptops, I had an Alienware from Dell. I know Dell owns Alienware. And when I had a problem with my Alienware laptop, they shipped me a box to put my Alienware in the box. And then I just had to ship it out to them. Didn't have to pay for shipping and handling with that. For the Nintendo Switch, when they were having left Joy-Con issues, when I had an issue, Nintendo sent me a box, put it in there, sent it out to them. What I'm trying to say is, Sony has been the only company that has wanted me to pay for shipping of my product, their product that is broken and under warranty. They want me to pay for shipping. Now, this could be a first world problem thing, I don't know, but it's definitely not something I was used to and something I really didn't care for. I feel like with customer service, you should kind of follow the lead of other companies that will pay for the shipping themselves. There were other instances with other products that I've had, but I don't really remember what they were. Just trust me with my past experience with the other items that I've listed. So that's another negative. The next negative is going to be the laggy low light video. Now for vloggers and you know filmmakers and such that are going to be using this camera, there could be times when you'll be in low light situations and you need to record something in low light. So I'm going to walk into my bathroom so I can show you a little bit of how the low light performance is. I guess I should turn off my closet light. All right, so I don't know if you can see it, but there is definitely a little bit of lag there. which really shows a you know decrease in quality so it's something to be aware of when you're out and about at night you're gonna notice a drop in quality of your videos now i think it's pretty understandable that it does that not many cameras will perform that well in low light but for a thousand dollars i'm a little disappointed with the performance of this camera in the low light one more negative of this camera is that it does have a slow startup and rating time to get going. Well, sometimes. There have been, it's about 50-50, I think, depending on what you're doing. Uh, say, if, for instance, you were just recording, then you stopped and then something was happening, so you wanted to quickly get your camera out and ready going again, like, I don't know, within a minute or 30 seconds of you shutting it off initially. It will and can take a while to start back up and get ready to start recording again. It's a bit delayed. Like I said, it just depends on how quickly you're trying to get it going as soon as after you turn it off initially after finishing recording something else. Um, other times, it should start up fairly quickly. There's been a few times here and there where even if I wasn't just finished recording something, it'll take a little bit to start up and get going again. But for the most part, if you're trying to record something back to back, after having it on, turning it off, and then trying to turn it back on real quick to record something, it can take a little while. Sometimes it doesn't even turn back on which is a problem that I've had several times. And then I just had to pull out my actual iPhone to record or take a picture of whatever I wanted to take a picture of or record. So that's something to keep in mind is the occasional slow startup and ready to go take a picture video time. Something to keep in mind. Another big negative that you get a lot for this camera for this generation in particular, RX100 Mark V, is that the battery life is really low. I mean, really low it's lower than the mark fours i believe because the mark V has a smaller battery size from what i remember i could be wrong but that was something i read a while ago because i was curious about why my camera just wouldn't last very long and so from the moment of me starting this video i've already lost the bar of battery the battery life is a little better depending on what kind of video mode that you're using, whether you're recording in 4K, 1080p 60, or 1080p 30. I typically record in 1080p 30. I used to try to do the 4K, which I'll touch on later, but the battery life on this camera is not that great. It's definitely going to be lower than like, say an iPhone that you'll be using. Well, depending on the iPhone and your battery health of said iPhone, but an iPhone will probably be better in battery life than this camera. And a camera, from what I believe I read before, will last for like 320 photos, which is pretty low from what I understand. I'm not by any means a camera expert, so I don't know if that's good or bad. That's another big negative, low battery. It can make it really tough to do videos and photos. And for me, to circumvent this, I try to always make sure that my camera is plugged in 
at all times. So another negative to keep in mind when you're recording videos for vlogs, movies, whatever you're trying to record for, is that the camera does not record for very long. So not only are you having to battle with the battery life, you're also going to have to battle with the heat because the camera does get warm pretty quickly depending on which mode that you're shooting on, video-wise. Uh, the higher quality that you decide to shoot on, the quicker the camera heats up and that's in turn creating less time for you to record your videos because the camera has this software thing where if the camera starts getting too hot, it'll just shut down. It will turn itself off to preserve itself and its life. Which I guess is a good feature to have to protect itself, but it sucks because when I record in 1080p 60, I can record for a max of 25 minutes at a time. About that, give or take. Uh, probably actually take five or so minutes. It really depends on the situation where I'm at. If the room is warm or cool or whatever. Uh, there are a lot of aspects to go to that, but the max I've gotten was about 25 minutes at 1080p 60 frames per second. To make matters even worse, if you want to record in 4K on this camera, typically I don't make it to the five minute mark if I were to do that because the camera would just overheat and shut itself off and stop recording. But if by some magical means I do actually make it to the five minute mark, it'll stop anyways. It won't record any longer than five minutes in 4K which kind of sucks, especially when you have phones coming out these days, like my iPhone 8 Plus that records in 4K 60 frames per second for essentially as long as I want, up until the phone gets hot and turns itself off, which takes a long while, or B, the battery dies, or C, I run out of storage. For this camera, five minutes, and that's if you can make it to the five minutes. Another aspect of this camera, which is something you want to keep in mind, the screen that flips up, it gets so easily scratched, or at least it would have in my case had I not gotten a screen protector, which I highly recommend for this camera. I have a link down below of where you can get the screen protector that I got for my camera, and I'll also show you a little bit of uh, video right now of what the screen would have looked like if I didn't put the screen protector on it because it will get destroyed. And I've seen other people's videos on the camera and their screens are very scratched up. So if you want to protect your screen, which I highly recommend, get this screen protector because this is a point and shoot camera. People typically put it in like their pockets, their backpacks, wherever. They don't typically just hold it at all times, which for me, I put it in my pocket a lot. So that screen gets scratched up. Sometimes I put it in my backpack, the screen gets, I'm telling you, Get the screen protector because the screen is going to get scratched very easily. All right, now it's time to move on to the pros of the camera, which is the best part and which honestly makes me feel like this camera is definitely worth it, especially for vloggers or aspiring YouTubers such as myself. As I got into at the very beginning of the video, the flip up screen is very nice, especially so you can see where you're aiming at and show what you're looking at and stuff. It's a very nice screen, I love it, and it's very easy to flip up and flip down. It also can flip at varying degrees of angles, so you can like get high up photos and you can see what you're looking at. It's a very, very nice screen. Very useful, very adaptable. Another great positive of this camera is the awesome videos and photos it actually takes. I'll do a video later on comparing this camera to say an iPhone if you want to compare what you want to use for vlogging and such. But this camera is incredible. As you saw earlier, the low light video, you can actually see pretty well in low light. It's a little laggy, yes, but you could see a whole lot more with this camera in low light than you would on say an iPhone. Plus the video is very clear. The optical image stabilization is very nice in this camera and I just scared myself. The crispness, the details, the colors, which I really can't say much about the colors. You will have to tell me down below what you think about the colors of the camera because unfortunately, I'm colorblind. So I don't really care about colors that much. I can see a little bit, but not a whole lot. The quality of this camera is incredible. It's a 20 megapixel sensor. I don't know. I'm not a camera geek, so I don't know about all this stuff. I can see on the front right here on the camera, it goes from f1.8 to f2.8. If that means anything to you. It zooms in pretty well, zooms in, you know, pretty far. It's just a really good camera. It really takes incredible photos and videos. And I'll show you some of my photos that I've taken over the time right now. The camera is really incredible. I can definitely tell the difference between the this camera and say an iPhone. 
I don't know about you guys, but I can definitely tell the difference between this camera and the iPhone. Not always, sometimes it can get pretty close when it's an optimal setting for the iPhone, like plenty of daylight outside. The iPhone is very good. If for anything less than optimal, this camera really outshines the iPhone. There are also lots of you know settings, options, and such that you can use for this camera, like changing video settings, contrast, colors, saturations. There's a whole lot of things you can do with this camera, a lot of customization, a lot more than you can do for an iPhone. Uh, I don't understand most of it myself, I just usually leave my camera in automatic mode. But from just playing around with it, I can definitely tell that there are a ton of settings and options that you can do for this camera. For all you photographers and videographers out there, vloggers, there you go. Lots of options for you. Another awesome thing about this camera is that when you're recording in 1080p, whether it be 30 or 60 frames per second, it will also take photos of you know your surroundings and yourself while recording video, which is pretty awesome. I've gotten some very good shots. I'll show you one right now of me when I was trying to get into a hammock in Florida recently. It takes some very good shots of people and your surroundings and everything around you while you're recording. So it's a two for one video and photography, videos and pictures. And you can also take pictures while you're recording. You just got to press the shutter button if you want to take a picture or something, but it does automatically take pictures. It like detects the faces of people, facial expressions, and tries to capture those moments within the videos, which I absolutely love because it has gotten some amazing pictures like that one in Florida. I thought that was a really good picture of me that I wouldn't have thought to take a picture of and I wouldn't have been able to take a picture of otherwise had I been vlogging on something else that doesn't have that feature. I don't know if other cameras have that feature or not. I'm sure they do, but if they don't, this camera definitely has it and it takes some awesome pictures. One more positive thing I can say for this camera as well is that it has this built-in Wi-Fi chip in it. That way you can download an app for your phone whether it be iPhone or Android, and the app is called the Play Memories app. So what you do with that app is that you can connect your phone to your camera and then take whatever photos or videos that you had just taken with your camera and transfer it directly to your phone or tablet. For me though, it only works for photos with my iPhone. It doesn't work for the video aspect because the iPhone does not support the video format that this camera records in. I don't know if that works for Android or not. I don't even know if it's actually still a feature, but when I first got this camera, it was a feature that you should be able to transfer your videos as well. If you have an iPhone, the videos part is out. If you have an iPad, the videos part is out as well. One thing I have tried before is getting one of those camera dongle things that you can use to transfer photos and videos from your memory card and your camera to your iPhone. The video still won't work. It won't show up, I tried it. The iPhone and iPad just doesn't support the video format. I don't know if the Android works or not with the video format, but I know for a fact that the iPhone and the iPad does not work. The MacBook does work with it, um, obviously because it's a computer. So just keep that in mind. You cannot transport over your videos to your iPad and the iPhone. You can do it to the Mac, but you can transfer over your photos from your camera to your iPhone and iPad. And that way you can upload them instantaneous or as fast as you want to places like Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, wherever you want to upload your photos to. You can do it very quickly and very easily. First, you set up the connection between your phone and your camera, and then you open up the app and you select what photos you want to transfer over from your camera over and transfer your photos over to your iPhone. It's pretty seamless and easy. I would be careful about transferring a large amount of photos, like 50 or photos or so, because it can occasionally fail from time to time and you won't know what place that your uh, photos stop transferring at. At least I don't all the time. So then you probably had to start all over or try to figure out where it stopped and could try to continue from there. So that's one thing in mind. It's pretty cool. I use the feature all the time to transfer my photos over. And so it's a pretty cool positive. The last great thing I have about this camera is the awesome optical image stabilization. It's very nice. It doesn't shake around a whole lot. If you could tell, I don't know if you can tell from all that, but it doesn't shake and I have shaky hands. I shake a lot. So for this optical image stabilization or OIS to be as good as it actually is, definitely makes me seem to be a better vlogger than I actually am um, steady hands wise because my hands shake a lot. I'm like shaking a lot. I don't know why. It's probably some medical thing. I don't know. But the optical image stabilization is very nice. 
um, especially when I'm walking and trying to record at the same time. I think that's going to be it for this video. My camera is finally starting to overheat. Uh, I've been recording for about 20 minutes. Probably going to have to cut out like five of it from all my mistakes and whatnot. But it's starting to overheat and when it does start to overheat, uh, the screen starts dimming and it shows like a temperature gauge up top and so it'll let you know that it's overheating. So that's my review of the Sony RX100 Mark V. It's a pretty quick review. It's not too terribly in depth because I don't know a whole lot about cameras but I did know that people were saying that this is a really good one to have for vlogging and I can actually see why. It's definitely great. Um, I will make a video later on comparing this camera to say an iPhone 8 Plus when it comes to vlogging, videography, and photography. So if you want to see that video sooner than later, make sure you tell me down below, like the video, subscribe so you'll see the video when I do bring it up because I am excited to see the differences between the uh, Sony and the iPhone 8 Plus because the iPhone 8 Plus records in 4K 60 frames per second, which is incredible for a phone. So like I said, if you want to see that video, make sure you comment down below, like the video, subscribe to this channel. I'll be coming out with it as soon as I can, and I'll catch you later. Peace.